Welcome along to episode 10 of Off The Leash, brought to you by the Racing Post in association with Premier Greyhound Racing. The madness of Cheltenham is over and we are back to the top class Greyhound Racing. As ever, good company joining us, Tony Bull of the Racing Post. Tony, how's your form? Yeah, not too bad. A little bit up and down, but we're in profit and that's all that matters. As you say, the madness of Cheltenham is over, but the madness of Cat 1's week in, week out in ground racing continues. It's like a festival each week with the dogs at the moment. Oh, absolutely relentless. So we've had the golden sprint. Um, we've parked that. That's finished. But we will look back on the final. And two new Cat 1's have kicked off as well. The uh, Premier Ground Racing Puppy Derby worth £20,000 to win. Uh, probably the biggest puppy competition of the year. And the Kent Plate as well, which could have long-term ground derby ramifications. Yeah, indeed. I mean, Kent Plate's very, very good competition. Obviously, Liz and Rab McNair holding plenty of the Trump cards, holding all the Aces series, so we should be say. But uh, Patrick Janssen's has sent down a tr- strong enough team. So, long way to go, but they look like they're holding the Trump cards, the McNairs. And, talking of the Golden Sprint, the winners keep on coming here on Off The Leash. Now, it's been, Tony has been throwing the most punches and proving the most knockouts with the bookmakers. But 25 to 1 front, Alice, we managed to find that one. And Tony's 33 to 1 supernova each way play, bag the place money in third. Um, We will look back on that final, Tony. Um, But the Golden Sprint, always a big competition. It might not be the most lucrative race of the year at Romford, but it is the big one over the standard trip. Yeah, and and this this is the beauty. This is why... Ground racing is such fun, Dave. There's nothing ever set in stone. You can always have a surprise result in the offing, particularly at Romford. Any given Friday at Romford, at this level, slightest mistakes, a missed break, you pay the penalty. But all credit to front, Alison uh, Kevin Proctor does really well with these bitches. She only started off in A6 at Harlow, uh, worked her way up the grades and then took a shine to Romford, did the business on the night. Well, let's take in that replay then, that final. It was a hell of a run as well from front, Alice. She went from track five, uh, doing the business. 23.86 was the winning time here. Killer detail in one, I thought, runner, an absolute stormer. And Supernova, as expected, as you predicted at the very start, a ground is very hard to keep out the frame. We'll keep plugging on. He flies down the back, but all about the orange jacket, who had to work sort of three deep at the first bend. She was brave, run a lovely second bend, and then she was away. Yeah, I mean, she's, she tracked on terms, which was what she needed to do. One and two have sort of hindered one another on the run-up. Druids, Sago, didn't get any luck whatsoever, even down the back straight. But that's Romford. I mean, it's no good looking pretty in the heats. You've got to get it right on the night in the final. And front, Alice certainly did. Defended the lead. You can defend the lead at Romford. Time was good. Killer detail runner, blinder and supernova. Regular frame hitter. He's run a creditable race in defeat. Yeah, for the second time this year, Romford uh, proving the place in which a trainer has been able to win a first ever Cat 1, much like Paul Burr did with Roxy's Bullet in the Coral Essex Vars final. Um, Kevin Proxy was having his first ever Cat 1 finalist, and he's only been a trainer for five years. He trained front edge, which was the first ground he had a licence to train, who reached the quarterfinals of the derby. This is a man who knows his way around a greyhound, Tony. Certainly does. I mean, he's got some nice youngsters coming through at, at, at the moment, and he, he just they, he does really well with them. And that's I, I don't think he's got a massive kennel, but you don't want too many. Like there ain't enough hours in the day sometimes to do all these dogs, Dave. So have a niche, select few, and he gets the job done and turns them out. He, these dogs look immaculate on parade. I've, I've kenneled in alongside um, Kevin a few times. You look down at his dogs, and they turned out really well. Excellent. Well, yeah, look out for front Alice going forward. As I said, I thought the runner-up runner storm were there as well. So big runs in killer detail on the ground to look out for. I think you probably want to draw down the middle more than anything else. Uh, we move on then and we talk about decent youngsters. And there was plenty on show at Monmore on Saturday. £20,000 Premier Greyhound Racing Puppy Derby, formerly known as the Midlands Puppy Derby. And... The most lucrative puppy event on the calendar and arguably alongside the puppy derby itself are the most prestigious as well. Because if you get a good pup and it's the right age, this is the place to go. It's certainly you only have to look at the list of previous winners. It's always been an event. There's derby champions come 
from this event and it's it stood the test of time there's never been a year where you could go that was a shabby one that was a, it always for even when you look at it on paper you think ain't a strong a renewal this year six months down the line you go look that was in that race that was in it, it just stands the test of time this event and always will do and the circuit i mean we touched on it when we was looking at the winter derby but it's a 480 uh it's I think the fastest 480 in the country because the good ones will dip inside 28 seconds. So a speed track. It certainly is. I think there was back in the day, there was a world record run, wasn't there? I think something like when they break the 28 seconds, it it classes as a world record for the distance covered. But although Monmore is a speed track, if you're good enough and you turn in the pitch, Dave, you can come from off the speed and reel in the leader. Well, more on that because we saw some uh, big performances in the heat. So we'll pick through a few of them. We're going to start with heat two. um, And Union Rebel here did the business for Kevin Hutton in the black jacket of Trap 4. 28.37. Now look out for a ground who's having his debut in the UK. Untold dollar in the red jacket here. As well as Delish Nora, who finished runner-up in the Puppy Oaks at Toaster last year. Winner was away and gone. Really nice performance. But... I've taken a shine into this untold dollar. He, his form at Clonmel was good. Uh, he's moved well in trials, and this was his first go, and I think there's loads more to come, but a good winner. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, untold dollar had moved well in trials, but sometimes it's easier to put them quick times up in trials. Six dog race, always a learning curve for any dog, but I'd be pleased with the run from untold dollar. But what early pace from Union Rebel. Obviously, Kevin brings his youngsters through. He's attached to Oxford nowadays and they've been coming through the ranks at Oxford and what an exit from Union Rebel foot to the pedal from the get-go Dave and just stayed out in front in a 28-27 a lot faster time than his previous runs at Monmore. Yeah really nice performance there Union Rebel, Untold Dollar and Delish Nora the three going through from Heat 2. Right we jump to Heat 5 and the ground who is the commentator's nightmare I think we're going to say here uh, Omar Herty is what I've uh, landed on. A 28 16. This is a ground who lit up the early rounds of the Northern Puppy Derby at Newcastle. Got to the final there uh, and was beaten by Clona Curley. We'll reverse that form here because the anti post favourite was on show. Uh, Omar Herty in five, Clona Curley in four, and Coppice Ella in the stripe. So the outside box is dominating here. Anti post Jolly in the four, beaten but ran a hell of a race to close up on an impressive winner. Yeah, and this, this Northern Puppy Derby form at Newcastle is working out really well because the three of these, the first three home, contested that particular final. But Omar Herty moved well in a, in a prep trial, at, come, had to come from off the speed. So showed he's a bit of a versatile um, dog. But again, another very good injection of early pace. Cloner Curley's have managed to emerge out of the pack in pursuit, but he just stole enough advantage, did Omar Herty, uh, fending off the... Surge of Clona Curley up the home straight in a good 28.06 calculated, Dave. Yep, Jolly safely through in trap four there, Coppicella in third, also qualifying from the stripes. Right then, heat six, and this was a belter of a race as well. Uh, I was very strong on Bantic Berry, I had a good draw, but it wasn't to be for the red jacket, it has been well backed anti post. It was Bally Zari in trap four who sailed on by. Late on 28.47, Valley Max Zari in four, Bantic Bear in one, and Droopy's auntie, the other qualifier, in trap six. Yeah, Droopy's auntie, again, did what she needed to do, cracked the way out wide, was trying to take the sting out of the stronger runners, but Bantic Bear and Valley Max Zari, you knew they was going to be laying it down in the second half, and I like the run of Valley Max Zari. I mean, Bantic Bear just had to sort of fiddle the third bend and, and, and check over the back of the leader, but... I like the track craft of Bally McZari, slotted on the inside, and I thought it was a good run. Obviously, the time wasn't as quick as the Omer Herty, but I like the fact that Bally McZari has improved with each look. I like any dog or bitch, if they find time with each look, that's always a good sign. Sometimes you get them doing the same time, and I've never really liked that in, in a dog. They should improve with a look round each race. Well, there you go. Something to look out for these scopy and progressive pups. And uh, Bally Zari was the price-wise pick from herself in the Racing Post. And I think she's going to be very hard to keep out of the frame. Um, I know Connections fans here as a bit of a stayer in time. And you can you can see why, right? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And again, for pups, likely race types, to have a little bit of intelligence. I've, how many clumsy dogs have you ever backed, though? You think you're travelling like the winner going into the third turn, runs up the back end of a dog instead of picking the inside-outside line. So 
to already have inherited that is going to stand her in good stead. Yeah, well, sometimes they only become clumsy once they carry my money. <laughs> There's yeah. that added weight, but I get what you're saying. Right, let's get to the good stuff then, because 36 has become 18 in this year's £20,000 Premier Greyhound Racing Puppy Derby at Monmore. And Sunday, uh, Saturday, uh, we will see three semi-finals of the lucrative puppy stake. And this is the first of them, the 12-17. Semi-final number one, Iceman's Girl on the inside uh, for Nathan Hunt and Darts player, Gerwin Price. Uh, Droopy Junis, Gary the Arb, who's been very well backed. The, a lot of the bookmakers reporting uh, significant money for this one. Anti-post, Cloner, Cody, Omaherty and Coppice Ella here. Five chalked up six to four favourite on the early prices and he's going to be a short price here because if he produces the same as last week, Tony, he's going to be very hard to beat, isn't he? And it, it, exactly that, Dave. I think if he can trap and show the same injection of pace, Coppice Ella shouldn't really be giving him any problems early. This, the Gary the Arb dog's got a bit of all-round pace, but he's seeing daylight around the first two bends. And I just think five could nick this off the front again. The fact that if he does hit the front and he can do 28.06, it's a big ask for the others. Yeah, I think it's an impossible ask if he does that sort of time. I don't think the others are capable of that. Just at the prices, I'll give a squeak to Droopy's Eunice, who's got good form over course and distance. If she were to bang out like she can and boss the inside, she might be a tough nut to crack. Uh, but it's going to be uh, a tentative vote for two. Are you a bit stronger in this race, Tony? you like five? Makeup of five, yeah. I think he's he's virtually assured with a level break to use his natural early pace. I don't think there's anything that can be a hindrance to him on the run of the turn. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, Twelve forty-seven semi-final number two, and this is quite competitive. This one, the two grounds on the inside dominate the market on the early prices. Uh, Vixen's final facts. The Thompson run of the local hope in the red jacket. Uh, not sure wants to be on the inside. Uh, untold dollar. He's two to one favourite. Get up me champ at nines. Droopy supply four. Bally Mac Zari seven to two. And Bramble Tango, the wide seed at 14 to one. Um, I'm going to be with two. I've, I've taken a bit of a, a liking to, to Untold Dollar. He was, I had my card marked when he came over. I look out for this dog. He's got good form in Clonmel. I looked at his form and I saw he got beaten the unraced stake. And I thought, well, he can't be that good. He got turned over in the unraced stake. And he came back and won the consolation and won it in a quicker time than that unraced stake final was won in. And then he's come over and he's left lengths on the track in his trials. He's checked at the soft, he's shown greenness, but this dog can really run. So if he misses one early on, um, I think he'll have the race at his mercy. What about yourself? Yeah, I think if two does clear one, two, two will storm into the final. Uh, I think, he's a, he, as you say, he's a very fast dog. But you can also forgive him. He's not only in August. I don't... I didn't think he was guaranteed to clear the Vixen's file of facts on the inside. And that's why I've, I've stayed with Bally Zari. Again, I think she's improving with each look. If she can eke another 10, 12 spots off of her overall clocking, she's 28, 20 now, 28. So again, that's going to be a reasonable standard. Droopy Supply has not got any real pizzazz early. I don't know much about Bramble Tango, I suppose could, could improve with more experience but if one and two do hinder one another and five secures first run on them she's strong so i think we'll be in a decent position at a value price well i'll be amazed if anything comes from behind ballymac zari uh, so they'll be looking out for the orange jacket then you wouldn't mind a price about her just qualifying from that semi she's very strong over the trip right semi-final number three and the anti-post favorite lines up here the northern puppy derby champion clona curly eight to eleven on the early prices, out in trap five, Delish Nora nine to two, Madabat Peck sixteens, Bantic Bear nine to two, Union Rebel the Heat winner eleven to two, then Clona Curly and Droopy's Auntie at ten to one. Um, this is not a straightforward task, I don't think, for Clona Curly because we saw in the heats that Union Rebels got big early, so I don't think five will clear for. Um, if he goes round on the shoulder, he might get it coming home, but he'll just need to tread carefully here, won't he? Yeah, this is a banana skin for the favourite. I mean, again, it, it was no surprise to see him put sub-28 second times up in a couple of prep trials, but I wouldn't have him down necessarily as an out-and-out mom more dog. Um, I think that if that if I was connected with five, I would want Union Rebel and Droopy's auntie to come away like they did in the first round. Get away from him. 
let him get the toe round rather than being alongside him at the turn. Because as you say, in the second half with daylight and a run, he's the fastest dog in the race. And I think he can come from just off the pace. But this is going to be hair and scare him for the first two bends for the favourite. Yeah, and at Newcastle, he came forward, didn't he? He mm. produced his best start in the final. And he's got that similar feel to him here, hasn't he? That They've left him off, they've trialled him, they didn't race him. And he ran a stormer in defeat, and they'll be hoping that he just qualifies. Mm. And then if he brings the trapping boots in the final, you know, he, he might just have that final at his mercy. But it's not straightforward. And he's 8 to 11 at the moment. I can see him being more like even money because people will see what we see and think this dog can get beaten more and more because he's perhaps not got the brutal early pace of, yeah. of some of the other dogs. And he looks like a 500 metre dog, a Derby dog already. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, as I say, out, out of the, the three semi-finals, I mean, Omar Herty has got the better makeup than the cloner um, Curly Dog. So you know, at the prices, he won on merit. Omar Herty, he did yep. win on merit. I right, to the eye when you watch a race like that, you always fancy the closer to turn the tables next time out, but. Being off the front sometimes, Dave, you've got nothing around you. The right goalkeeper in behind, you can hold on. Yeah, I do like the Barnsley Bear Dog. I think he's quite similar as well to, to mm. Clone Cody, that he's probably a 500-metre dog as well. So whether Monmore is going to be for him, um, but there wouldn't be many coming from behind him. He'd be very strong over the trip. So vote in semi-final three goes to? I'm going to be with five because I do think four and six will smash out and he'll, he won't get tangled up. So we can assert like I'll be the same, but it wouldn't be a strong selection from me there. Just got to tread carefully around those first couple of turns. Right, let's have a look at the outright book then, because he did harden up slightly um, despite tasting defeat in the first round. Uh, and it resumes on Saturday. It is the £20,000 Premier Greyhound Racing Puppy Derby at Monmore. And the Northern Puppy Derby champion, Clona Curley, is top of the shop at 100 to 30. Uh, Omar Herty at a 13 to 2. Delish Nora and Untold Dollar both at eight. Stroopy Junis at 11. Bantic Bear at 14. 16 to 1 bar. Um, a long way down to uh, Manny Maxari. Um, I thought might have shortened up a little bit because of the each way angle, Tony. Um, and I don't know, I think you're probably the same as me that I wouldn't put anyone off sort of having an each way play now because she looks like she's going to be hard to keep out the frame. Yeah, yeah, not so obviously his first two to qualify formats, it makes it a little bit trickier. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a bit of value, Bally Max Ari for sure. But at the prices, I thought six thirteen to two for Omar Herty wasn't too bad because I think he will win his semi. I think he can get off the front. And if some of the other speedsters don't go through, he could un enjoy an uncontested lead in the final. And the overall clocking suggests that he could take some fetching in. He's got a tricky draw in his semi-final as untold dollar, but I'd throw a couple of pennies at him at eight to one because if he clears one, uh, he could do a massive run. And then if the draw's kind to him in the final, you know, he looks to me like he could come forward at a rate of knots and, and be something special. But Clona Curley at the moment is the dog to beat. And if he gets to the final... 100 to 30 is going to be a big price because he's not going to be anywhere near that. But it's a fascinating one. You've got the favourite there that could be vulnerable in the early pace department. Um, right, it's not just the Premier Greyhound Racing Puppy Derby. The Arc Kent Plate got underway as well. We won't go into too much detail there, but it's the Liz and Rab McNair show, right? Yeah, I mean, the King Memphis, Queen Joni, King Capaldi. I mean, gee, what a litter. I mean, we, every year we go, oh, this is the best litter yet. This is the best litter yet. I mean, I do think, and I think Rav and Liz McNair, probably, if they can top this year's crop or last year's crop, then, like, wow, that's, 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 that's going to take some beating, in my opinion. But it, 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 nothing has surprise me, but these really do set the pulse racing, uh, this, this droopy Sydney Queen Beyonce. Uh, progeny and even the Queen Joni, Droopy Sydney Queen, Jesse J. They've just got it all, Dave, and they're putting yeah. the times up. Look at their record 19 wins, 19 runs, 13 wins, 21 runs, 14 wins. It's just crazy, really, at that level. And they're British bred as well, which is brilliant. So we mm. wish them well. We'll tackle the final next week, £12,500 final next Saturday night, Super Saturday 
next week because you'll have the, the more, more Puppy Derby final and the Kent Plate final as well. Right. It is that time of the week for the best bets. And Tony Bullen, you have the floor. Yeah, I did look at Omer Herty, but I thought he's he going to be like under two to one. So I took a chance with Bally Maxari. I just think if one and two do sort of hinder one another around the opening bends, the strong running Bally Maxari going the right way at Monmore. She took eight races to open her account at Oxford, but she's developing now and developing nicely. So seven or two, four to one, Bally Maxari, I think might be a spot of value. Lovely. 12.47 on Saturday at Monmore, that one. Right, I'm going a little bit off-piste because uh, I'm going to Romford on Friday night. It was a ground who I fancied to go well uh, in the first round of the Puppy Derby at Monmore, and it wasn't to be. Uh, but a ground who showed loads of early pace in a trial stake at Monmore, and now he switches back to Romford, and that is Headford Genius in the 8.27. He goes in a maiden. Uh, he's not going to be much of a price. They could be backable because he got turned over last week, so I, I don't fancy it'd be too short. But Headford Genius for Maxine Locke, a decent exit, and that early pace will take him to the front, and he can shed his maiden tag in good style. They're our best bets. Bally Zari for Tony, Headford Genius for myself, and we will be back next week. £20,000 Premier Ground Racing, one more puppy derby. £12,500 Kent Plate Final at Central Park as well. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Get your questions in, who you're backing, who you fancy, and what do you make of the current state of Greyhound Racing in the comments below? And we'll read out your comments next week. We'll see you next time. Please remember to gamble responsibly.